bist du? Nein, noch nicht. Das war jetzt für mich ein Dreh. Gewesen, wo man This shoot was a matter of life and death. Um Leben und Tod. Gut, ja, so weiterfliegen, Jonathan, das ist sehr schön, so weiterfliegen. He possesses the ideal combination of endurance and mental strength. Solo climbing means you're alone on the face, all by yourself. Between 2008 and 2009, Ueli Steck climbed the three great north faces of the Alps in record time. During these record climbs, Steck was alone and without a camera crew. If you shot the ascent in real time, you'd never get such good footage. To create spectacular shots, you have to know which spots look best. You need time to line up the shots, which is something you can't do while you're climbing. If you're shooting during an ascent, you can't perform at your limit. It's just not possible. Images, however, are very important for Ueli Steck. In March 2010, he agrees to do his ascents again in collaboration with production company Dockmine. In the end, you need images, that's for sure. And you have to communicate with your audience too. So your images and footage must look spectacular, but also explain the whole thing. Ueli Steck is a solo climber. But in order to film his ascents of the three north faces, he had to depend on a professional team working in the background. It's important for me to work with a cameraman or photographer who I trust. Sometimes you have a bad day where nothing works out. And then you have to be able to tell people, hey, let's turn around. Today is not the right time. So you need a confidant like Robbie Bush. We've been working and climbing together for more than 10 years. It's important for me to have this relationship with the cameraman. Robbie can climb a face all by himself. He doesn't need anyone to secure or assist him. You can just give Robbie a camera and off he goes. That's the only way to do it. Safety always comes first. Where can we shoot or take stills? In this particular case, Uli was always climbing on his own, so he wasn't secured. How far is he willing to go? How many risks is he willing to take for the sake of the images? On the other hand, we do need this footage to make the film work and to make it look spectacular. Er ist ganz nah am Gipfel gerade. Er ist oben. There was a time frame of only three weeks for the shoot at the three north faces. Any later, and the weather would have been too warm, and the risk of falling rocks too high. Hence the shoot had to be planned as efficiently as possible. The weather was very unpredictable. It was impossible to just say, we'll go there in four days. 
Together with Uli, I had to get information about the snow conditions, so I was constantly in contact with a meteorologist. It was a very complex affair. I technically spent most of my time on the phone. The biggest challenge, however, was the approach to the steep north faces for the chute. At the Eiger North Face, an extra stop at the Stollenloch Tunnel exit was used. From there, Ueli Steck and cameraman Rebbe Bursch were able to approach the face directly. There are many advantages to being just two people on the climb. We're much faster and more flexible. Speed always equals safety on the face. There's a big difference between shooting for only one day or for five. However, Ueli Steck and Rebbe Bursch were unable to get all the shots on the face. Some of the passages on the Eiger and on the Matterhorn are very difficult to approach, so it was impossible to get a camera in there. For this reason, helicopters were used to set down Uli Steck and occasionally Rebbe Bursch directly on the face. The most difficult thing was never knowing exactly when we'd start rolling. The go came suddenly, everybody was scrambling, and then the team came back with fantastic footage. So, I want to the panorama in the hall. My father has to look at the Ja, ja, klar. Communication is very important, with the pilot and with Ruby, who sits in the back and says, there he is. Uh, no, he's already further up. It's very hectic and you have to stay calm and still do the best job possible. The long line is another possibility. You're hanging underneath the helicopter and they'll set you down right on the face. It looks very spectacular. This works very well. It's a very efficient way of getting onto the face. This was actually developed by rescue teams. By shooting from the helicopter and using the long line, the team was able to capture footage from unusual perspectives and in excellent weather conditions. The helicopter shots on the Matterhorn turned out to be more difficult. The weather was highly unpredictable and the aerial camera work required minute precision. One shot in particular, where you see Uli in the ice field on the summit, makes you shudder. Seeing and feeling what they were actually doing was just extraordinary. We had extremely high winds on the summit, around 80 kilometers per hour, and temperatures below 30 degrees. That's pushing the limit. It was important to get this whole thing over with as fast as possible and get Uli back into the helicopter, because you don't last long in these kinds of conditions. He did actually freeze his fingers rather severely in the short amount of time he was out there, an hour or so. Two or three more hours and it could have ended in disaster. I went beyond my limit out there. To freeze your fingers so badly is something that must never happen. I just didn't realize it then and there, and it was my mistake too in the end. It was up to me to say at any time, we won't do this. It just goes to show how fine the line really is. Uli Steck received immediate medical treatment in Zermatt. Fortunately, everything turned out well and the shoot was successfully completed. Both the physical hardship and the pressure of making this film were immense for Uli Steck and the entire production crew. It took a lot of patience, trust and effort. 
effort to create these exceptional images about an exceptional achievement.